way to go out, man. It's the end of the world. Sing it, Mark. Mark's a musician. Where's your mic? Here he goes. J. Mark Campbell. <laughs> Just hum it. Why is my heart going beating? Why is my heart going beating? How does my heart beat if it's the end of the world? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Here it is. Here we go. It's the end of the world. December 21, 2012. That's it, folks. <laughs> It's the end of the world. So we're in a new world now. This is a new world. We're creating our own world. Um, I guess we're in charge. The picture just died on this thing, Mike. Oh, mine, mine uh, is frozen. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, mine's spinning. Well, if the world just ended, as what was that Sandy? Was that what was what was the name of the uh, artist singing? That was an old one. Yeah, who, who like Connie those? Francis, Connie I think. Francis, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah. Connie Francis. Um, if the world just ended as the Mayans, I mean, they're making a lot of money on this deal, like two or three <laughs> Mayans that are left on the face of the earth. Uh, if the world ended, then we have started our own world up here. Well, we have a new age. We have uh, Joe Biden out there. He's head of our new gun control czar. Yes, he is. And uh, actually, I think that's a great choice because... Joe Biden's past record is he gets absolutely nothing done. So this could be actually really good news for us, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think Joe Biden getting nothing done is is really good for all of us. Because, heaven forbid, he actually accomplished anything he said he was going to do. How come I don't have anything on Trento Vision? I got it. It's going. It's going. Okay, let me get mine started. Um, well, here's what's happening, folks. Tom Trento, TrentoVision.tv on the 21st of December. Uh, 2012, yes, the Mayans are wrong. No, maybe not. Uh, uh, Connie Francis said it was the end of the world as we know it here, but um, there's still time left. You know, 25, you know, maybe they didn't count for daylight savings time in their 25,000-year oh, prediction. <laughs> so they could be off a couple of days. They so could be off a couple of days. So. Right. That's true. You know, 25,000 years of missing in an hour or two here, you know. But we're here anyway. We're going to continue with our world. And those of you watching at home on TrentoVision.tv, tell your friends about this stuff. Because there's a lot of people there, 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 12 o'clock on the East Coast. They go, I got nothing to do. You know, and they go to the TV. They watch the same news that's recycle, recycle. Or they put on soap operas. We are a better soap opera. We make jihad fun, okay? <laughs> we make jihad fun. Uh, you got to fight these guys. You got to fight these battles. But you got to be able to laugh a little bit and uh, enjoy life as you're beating the hell out of the bad guys. That's our plan. That's what we do. We're national security analysts, experts. We have a whole range of folks like um, the amazing Claire Lopez. Was she amazing or what yesterday? She really is. She really is. And I'm looking forward to our next hour when we will have IQ Rasuli uh, visiting back with us because I would love to have him do a Middle East roundup the way that Claire did yesterday and get, and get his perspective on Great things. idea. Just like he has on his website. Maybe he could go over that with us a little bit. We, know many, of you, we know many of you driving your automobiles are um, pulling in and out of town town centers and malls all over the place and you're jumping in your car and you're listening on the radio and you're getting in and out well the last hour we had on an amazing individual um you can agree with him you don't have to agree with him but if you don't agree with him you better have a reason not to agree with him that was his whole point right he said i don't care if people don't agree with me they can get mad at me all that all they want right they got to have a factually based reason why they're rejecting me or why they want to kill me <laughs> people want to kill him um uh iq and that was kind of um, mystic. Yes. The way he said, uh, he'll reveal, he'll reveal, I will reveal my name on television <laughs> in America, and I will make all the Muslims go crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I think we ought to, when he does it, I think he has to <laughs> unveil himself on our show. I think we got to live stream him yeah. when he does that. But IQ Al Rasali, and uh, Claire sent me a, uh, an email saying his name means the messenger. 
Ooh. The messenger. Uh oh, yeah. that's very provocative. Yes, um, he was just on. He, I guess that's one of her thirty-eight languages that yeah. she speaks. He's a uh, an Iraqi born in Iraq. Sounds like he is what in his sixties or early seventies, maybe. What yeah, I was tempted to ask him what his gen- yeah. like what regime he he grew up oh, under. We could ask him, um, yeah. but but I didn't want to ask him any questions that would help identify, identify him. him yeah. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. well, he he would answer. I mean, we'll, we could ask. Him. Yeah, okay. but um, my guess is he's in his sixties or so because he said for thirty-five years he's been fighting this stuff. Uh, and um, I spoke to him a little bit yesterday in preparation for the show, and um, he's uh, he's a secularist. You know, he grew up in a secular home, and he doesn't talk about what his beliefs are. He says, you know, my, my beliefs are irrelevant. He says I'm I'm criticizing uh, Islam. He says, because it needs to be criticized. Too many people have been fooled by Islam. Too many people, Muslims, he has many, many Muslims friends mm-hmm. um, who uh, don't know who he is that way because they would get mad at him. Mm-hmm. But um, They don't that, recognize his voice? Uh, they all sound the same. <laughs> this guy's in the Middle East. Hey, <laughs> He speaks Arabic because we had him speak it unless he just, that's yeah, the only verse Yeah, to show off his bona fides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he, he, uh, he laid out a little bit of material. He had has over 300 um, presentations online. So I think we'll have enough material for another hour in the third hour. Uh, so 888-565-1470. You can call um, anytime. We're going to get into two items We're going to get into, We're gonna get into some gun stuff. But we want you to know about uh, thepatriotspress.com. ThePatriotsPress.com. What we're doing at Trento Vision is we are trying to unify and successfully unifying the um, the the uh, counter jihad movement. What is a counter jihad movement? Can anybody define a counter jihad movement? Well, you labeled it. Right wing haters. Right wing haters. We're, we're 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 the extremists. We are the people that the uh, State Department says you got to watch out for those guys. You know, look out for them. They're the terrorists. Oh my gosh! Uh, there they should is, be listed as a hate group by the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center. Yeah, there's all kinds of nonsense going on. <laughs> uh, but um, the the fact number one, there is a jihad going on worldwide. We need to ask Al IQ. We'll call yeah. him IQ. Need to ask him about the jihad, mm-hmm. and um, the jihad is uh, simply the the methodology through jihad that the Islamic world uses to advance Islam and to control the world, um, which they're trying to do in the United States. Yeah, and and this kind of stuff sounds crazy, but isn't this what Hitler tried to do? Isn't this what Stalin tried? I mean, this is pretty normal. People have a view that uh, their belief is the right belief and they need to control the world. Yeah. Well, Islam's a totalitarian worldview. Utopian, supremacist, uh, th- uh, dystopian. Th- yeah, dis- yeah, dysfunctionally dystopian. Yeah. Um, those are good words. Do you like that? Yeah, those are good so, words. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, no, no. But the fact of the matter is there is a jihad. There's a movement worldwide to advance Islam either by the sword, which is often called the kinetic jihad, but the other jihad is the cultural jihad. If you can... Tell me this. Quiz me this, Joker. If you can get into the White House, you can get into the White House two ways. You take your uh, scimitar... And you run through the front door, smashing the front door, and try to run in that way. That's kinetic jihad. Or cultural jihad is you dress up in an Armani suit. You have four distinguished Muslim individuals that sit on the Human Rights Commission in four different states. And you receive an invitation to have lunch with the president. Yeah, and you say, hi, I'm from the Muslim (laughs) Brotherhood, and I'm here to help. What I mean, who in their right mind would those guys go, get these scimitars, Mohammed, let's smash it? Hey, guys, the president invited us in. The goal is to get in and to have influence. Yeah. So we're there, guys. And it's not just this president. Nope. No. George Bush did the same thing in his last uh, four years. Democrats and Republicans. Yep. But now, but... Though we go on the record saying that the jihad is um, cross-cultural, uh, it's it's nonpartisan. Fact of the matter is, um, 
much of what George Bush was doing, advancing the jihad, the cultural jihad, was out of ignorance, out of a lack of understanding. Conversely, this president understands the jihad. He's participating in building the Muslim He's Brotherhood's caliphate. He's funding, funding it. He's it sending with our checks. Taxpayer dollars. Uh, and in the contrary, the the uh, the 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 oasis of democracy in the midst of a ring of jihad fire. That country, Israel. He's doing whatever he can to hinder their capability to fight the jihad and to deal with Iran. So when we say we fight, we're a counter-jihad movement, we're fighting those Sharia-compliant Muslims. If you're not a Sharia-compliant Muslim, like IQ said, right. then you're not a Muslim, really, you know, right. a, a true Muslim. Yeah. You, we're with you. We're, we're, you're Americans, we're with you. Those who want to implement cultural jihad in America... We're fighting that. This radio station, our work is to organize Americans to fight and save and preserve the principles of the Constitution of the United States of America. We think it's better than the Quran. Is that so crazy? Oh, my God. So, anyway. Mark, what are you doing? You look. Uh, like he's working. He's working. Everybody's I'm working. Beat up on IQ you're reading when he comes your. Later. I, yeah, I get, I'm, he's getting I'm, ready I'm to win his $100,000. $100, yeah. yeah. You're reading your texts. He's doing his emails. <laughs> I mean, we're having a grand old time here on the 21st of December. I, I, hey, this is $100,000. I'm prepping here. Mark is getting ready. I, I, um, you are going to share it with us, right? You're going to be the judge. You're going to be the arbiter, the judge. You're going to share it with us? Or see that microphone? Joe, you cut I'm that mic share, off, Joe. I share. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, yesterday, when I ruled the world for 15 yes, minutes, did. Yes, I, did. did I not share my our, wealth? Our tiny little world. <laughs> I got a raise. In you got a raise in less seconds. seconds. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. Okay. Take that. Okay. Yeah. yeah what right. do you do, That's Mr. Cool. Mr. Money Bags yeah. over there? Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm rolling. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of money. Speaking of money. Yeah. We know that many of you in this Christmas season are just experiencing the heartfelt need to give. You you uh, get up in the morning. You see the lights and the snow and the sun and the beach wherever you may be, and you simply want to give. Well, we give, will receive. Give, give. Yes, <laughs> we we here at Trento Vision, we can receive your gift because if you go to TrentoVision.tv, there's a little green thing that's is it green yet? Little green button on the right hand side. It says donate securely. Now, why wouldn't you want to donate Christmas time to help keep us on the road? Plus, it would help me and my eight children who only eat oatmeal. <laughs> Oh, you did gruel. get that oatmeal. <laughs> I thought they were eating gruel. You did get the oatmeal? Yes, oh, I did. Great. How's little Billy these days? <laughs> With these crutches. Yes. Is he? <laughs> and his wooden leg. <laughs> no. no, no, no. He's Billy has to sleep outside with the farm animals. Oh, to keep warm at yes. night. Um, in the frigid temperature. He sleeps in, in the, the frigid manger. Floor, <laughs> in the frigid parkland, uh, in the frigid coral springs. Um, yes. Yeah, if I Little live Billy. there, which of course I don't. Yes. So don't go looking they... for me there. <laughs> That's right. We don't know where anybody lives on this show. Um, I live in my car with my eight children yes. who only eat oatmeal. That's right. Uh, if I have... <laughs> but but we don't want to burden you with our burdens. <laughs> we don't want to make your Christmas time a sad time. We'll we'll take the sadness. We'll take the burdens upon us. We'll take the cares of the world upon us. We'll take all the difficult. You have a good time on Christmas. Just go enjoy the beach. We don't need donations. We don't need any donations. But, oh. But we don't need. We don't need donations. We don't need donations. Anything. No, uh, uh, but you can minute, donate let if you me want. Wipe the, let me wipe this. And this thing. We are <laughs> five. <laughs> let me get the, let me get the bomb. Oh, let, me, let me get the bomb a you tear out of there. You got a good shot of my wedding ring while I'm doing that. Yeah, I'm a married guy. Let me get the bomb a tear. Um, if you hadn't, if you don't know what that is, this is the president the other day wiping away fake tears three times. You know? This what? Yeah, Mike just said you're pretty sassy today, CJ. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, this yeah. weather. Sassy J. Yeah. Sassy J. But you can donate securely. We would appreciate a end of the year gift because um, hey, the world is ending today. What do you need money for? That's true. Just that's true. Dump it all. Trust fund babies who want to fund. Dump it all. You want to fund the revolution. You want, look. <laughs> every trust fund baby out there, you really live a 
useless life. I mean, you get up, you have, you don't have to go to work. That's really right? not a uh, not, not an incentive, you, Tom. You, no, they, they, it's a useless life. We're gonna we're gonna give them some value. <laughs> Look, they live in a big house. They get up anytime they want to. Okay, right. they have maids cooking any kind of food they want to. They right. can they can fly no, anywhere. No, they have chefs cooking. They have chefs maids cooking. Clean. The maids are cleaning. Yeah. They they don't have to think. They have people that help them to their to their Porsches and their Ferraris. They can drive wherever they want. There's no purpose, no meaning. They wanna they wanna do something. They get they call the guy. The limo comes, takes them to their yacht. They go play around on the yacht for a while. There's no no understanding of life. Just pure fun and enjoyment and excitement. No real sense of purpose in their life. That sounds kind of boring to me, actually. Are you, are you can, President Obama? They can, yeah. fly, they can fly to Europe whenever they want to on their own jets, all of that. We can provide They could meaning. go to Paris for supper if they want they to. They can do that. But it's but then they come back and they go, what a boring trip to Paris, eating at that great restaurant <laughs> and drinking that fabulous wine. What a boring time that was. I wish I had purpose in my life to do something that got me in a position where people hate me and want to kill me. I wish, yeah. I wish I did something so like that. So for all you people who live that lifestyle, <laughs> and you want to you join the have revolution, meaning and purpose while you're having supper in Paris, all you have to do is make a little donation on your way to the airport. You can do it on your smartphone, I'm sure. That's right. uh, That's on the right. way to the airport, if you know, if you don't carry your own phone, you can have you know yeah. your assistant do it for you. <laughs> and uh, and then while you're having your supper and drinking your wine, you could just relax and enjoy yourself, knowing that more of your money is going for a good cause. Hey, Tom, I do have to say. Wait, I just got a text. It says, cry like Boehner. Cry like Boehner. <laughs> <laughs> that may work. That may work. <laughs> I don't know uh, what I'm gonna do. I mean, glycerin. Yeah, I, when, yeah, yeah. when you act, you put glycerin in your eyes, and it cries. It's hard for me to cry on cue. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, in, in any event, I've seen say you do it lots mm. of times. I well, that, that, that was the most stirring, uh, in, inspirational <laughs> donation speech for trust fund people. Yeah, I think we should <laughs> play <laughs> this again on Christmas. <laughs> yes, this would be a good for our Christmas, Christmas show. show. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, really, for you little punks that have so much money. <laughs> You don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Give us a call. We'll, we will. We will. Five hundred one C three. We'll we'll make it all disappear. We will spin your life around. You wouldn't know it hit you, and you'd be going, "Where have you people been all my life?" Now your family may disown you, but so what? Come on, man. Get Actually, on board. you can make your donations anonymously as well if you're interested and you don't want to be identified as a donor. Just contact. Tom at yep. TrentoVision.tv, mm -hmm. and he will tell you how to safely, securely, and anonymously yeah, donate to the organization. Yeah. Yeah, we take a little trip to Switzerland, and then, uh, <laughs> no, it actually can. People can donate. Um, the IRS has certain levels, mm -hmm. uh, and if you're a larger donor and you want to maintain anonymity, yeah. as some people do, they just... Yeah. Uh, not so much for the subject matter, though some people do, but they just, right. they're, they're private. They, they, yeah. A lot of them are, are Christians or Jews who just don't want their name out there, you know. In, they don't want anybody know. contacting them no, for they more stuff. You yeah. actually can give to a, uh, what's called a donor-directed fund. You mm -hmm. give to a fund, mm -hmm. and um, you can direct it through there. So the, the name that appears on the 990 forms of our organization is, a, is an organization, not an individual. Mm -hmm. And thousands and thousands of individuals give that organization, so you never know never know who it is so your, right. your name is protected but um but in any event uh iq al rasoli will be back in our five o'clock hour we'll get back into that a couple of items that uh, we want to deal with right now uh can you check to see if john hammer john hammer is the marine who um took basically a toy shotgun what is it i can't read Oh, it actually wasn't that? a shotgun. Oh, that's the from the. Oh, that's yeah, from, from the. the uh, NRA. Right, we'll have it actually yeah. wasn't a, uh, a shotgun. It's actually a, a a very low powered rifle. Was what it was. It yeah, wasn't a four ten. No, it was a four ten shotgun. Well, they they had a picture of it. I think so. I didn't know if that was an error on our part or an error in the store. No, no, no. It's it's a uh, four ten. I mean, every every story and they verified and all that. A little. It's a. Well, Fox it's not News. A toy. Had, it's not a well, toy. Fox News had had actually a rifle displayed of what he tried to. They, they had the wrong picture. Because um, I know what a 410 shotgun is. Yeah, it, they, they just took a picture, one of the producers. So a little 410 shotgun. It's not a toy. No gun is a toy. Uh, you know, even even those little cork guns, 
you know, when you're around kids, you tell them never point this at anybody, never point a gun ever at anybody. Um, so no gun is a toy, but it was not a weapon. The, the One of the arguments that the Mexican uh, government was making was it's one of our designated weapons of war. Okay. Now, how would you like to serve in the Mexican army? <laughs> they give you a Force 10 shotgun to defend yourself, right? I mean, this is basically nuts. John Hammer, a Marine, decorated Marine, a couple of tours, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, uh, in one of his tours, his buddy was standing next to him and took a, a sniper bullet to the head and was killed. And uh, and the trauma of a good friend, a, a, a band of brothers, somebody you fight with, you train with, you know, for years, and then you watch them drop right next to you. Um, that impacts your life. He, he then, uh, through the trauma, uh, was impacted with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, he got out of the, the military after uh, years. There's this picture right there, chained to a bed. What a disgrace that is. Um, and uh, I went through some programs, went through one program in Miami that didn't quite work, then went out to a program in Southern California for, uh, I think, several months. And you never get rid of, in one sense, PTSD, but you develop skills to, to deal with it so that you can function fine. Um, and, and you know how it is. I mean, every, all of us have been through some sort of trauma, and, and you can associate it to a smell or a sound or a sight. Whenever you see that thing again, you go, oh, my God, it takes you right back there, and you get, you get just a, a, a physiological reaction. Well, the, train, the, uh, the program he went through taught him to, uh, to deal with that, and they said, you need to go on a little trip and just clear your head. What do you like to do? I like to surf. Well, go right. surf someplace. Oh, man, we'll go to Costa Rica, great waves. We'll hang out. We'll chill out. They said, great therapy for you, go. He bought a little van. He got his, uh, one of his Marine buddies who was also um, uh, out, of the, uh, out of the service. They loaded up their van, and they took a little 410 shotgun to go to Costa Rica and uh, shoot, you know, whatever, birds, ducks, whatever you can shoot with a 410 shotgun. Um, and they were going to stay for a month or so. Go through U.S. Customs. They said, gun's fine with us. Go to those guys over there on the Mexican side. Went to the Mexican side, the first uh, checkpoint. They, they, uh, they measured the barrel of the gun. They looked at everything. They got the serial number. They checked everything. Said, fine, go ahead, go. Went to the next checkpoint. They arrest them at the next checkpoint. They said, you have a military weapon. You're running guns. Yeah. Okay? And uh, this happened, ladies and gentlemen, this happened in August of this year. The Hammer family, H-A-M-M-A-R, had tried to negotiate with the prison quietly behind the scenes and was getting nowhere. They were getting calls at night in their home from extortionists in the prison saying, give us, you know, us $2,000, you can have your son back, that sort of thing. Got to the point where it was, it was, uh, his life was in danger by the drug <laughs> scum in that drug scum prison. They had to remove him, isolate him, and and the lawyers and a few people have stayed in touch with him, and they said that uh, the post-traumatic stress disorder was um, creeping back in. Uh, how could it not in a situation like this? Then Fox News, you know, Fox has fallen down in some areas uh, in covering news properly, but um, on this one, they, they hit it out of the park. Every single show, every host, um, start featuring this kid's plight. And a couple of days ago, Bill O'Reilly, who's got the largest station on Fox, he got heavily into this. And he was, you know, making a lot of noise. And uh, Senator Nelson, uh, Bill Nelson from Florida got in. Ileana ross Layton, the congresswoman of John Hammer. John Hammer lives just south of Miami, Florida, about 35, 40 minutes from here. She was involved, and uh, then we got involved. We put a little couple shows together and start screaming and saying, pick up a phone, Obama and Hillary. We're the ones that did this, okay? We'll take all the credit. You take for, credit for everything. Yes. You for and everything. Mark. Yes. Yeah. Right. Now, is he home yet? Or what's no, the, I'm no, looking, I'm, I, looking I, yeah, I'm not, not finding, not I'm not finding him home they're, yet. They're still reporting that he's on the way, on the way, on the way. But you never, with these things, 
this is one of these uh, checks in the mail thing. Unless you actually get it, it's not actually done. So it's not totally done, but it lo it's looking good. All right, and one of the, one of the key areas that um, that uh, was effective. A couple of Republican congressmen yesterday, two days ago, said, "Guess what, Mexico." Let the kid go, or we're going to call for a boycott of uh, tourism into Mexico. That got their little Mexican uh, antenna up. So uh, we got to stay on this, America. Wherever you are, anybody listening, whatever position you're in to help this kid out, uh, we got to get him out of there. Got to get him out of here, out of there today. That's the way it looks like it's going. Okay, Tom Trento, 32 minutes past the hour. The hour in Florida is four. If you're in uh, Texas, it's three. If you're in uh, some place to the left of Texas, it's two. And then if you're in uh, California, it's if 32 minutes. If you're in minutes. La La Land. If you're in La La Land, it's 32 minutes past 1 o'clock. And uh, we are TrentoVision.tv. That's how you can watch the show. And if you want to listen and you're driving in South Florida, or actually the whole southeastern coast of Florida, from Miami to Orlando, WNN 1470, 1470. On your dial, you will hear the beautiful music we're making. What are you showing me? Oh. And what? Oh, you got an update on them? Okay. All right, well, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's get a Kazi Brothers update. Mark, tell everybody who they are, and then um, we'll go to a Newtown update. <clears throat> a couple of words. You have a NRA statement to read? Well, it's, it's quite an extensive statement. I just wanted to read a little, little bit of clip it. off right, it. Let's yeah. do the Kazi Brothers, then we'll do NRA, and then we'll take some calls. 888-565-1470. 888-565-1470. Yeah, the uh, Kazi Brothers, uh, FYI for your information, are the two, we believe they're Muslims, because nobody's actually, actually ever used that word yet, but we did verify that they were Islamic. And that they are, they were arrested for providing for wanting to set off weapons of mass destruction and uh, interstate commerce violations. So, the assistant unit, uh, Mark Hallberg, wrote one of our guests the other day, did some uh, extensive reporting, and he got some more information about it. He said the Kazis traveled to New York last month in hopes of getting a job to fund his terrorist plans. Gilbert said, the prosecutor, but wound up sleeping in public transportation, a mosque, and in restaurants, and riding bicycles around the city looking for potential targets. He then decided to return home on a Greyhound bus and was arre arrested after arriving back in South Florida, she said. Quasi, a naturalized U.S. citizen who attended local Florida public schools, confirmed many elements of the plot in a statement to the FBI agents after his arrest in late November, Gilbert said. And so he's, they're, still, they're still in jail here in the... In the, in the, the Broward County Broward Federal. County. But they're in a federal prison in Broward County. Right. And yeah. the trial is supposed to come up in about two or three months, which is actually pretty quick for a trial that's like really that. That's really quick. I, I can't, that's never, never. going to happen. Well, I was talking to the, the one of the prosecutors who says, no, we're going to really push this thing to be really, you know, happen quickly. So, Wow, that'd be great. We will cover the Quasi trial. The Quasi boys, uh, Quasi 1, Quasi 2. What's their names? Uh, quasi 1, Quasi 2. Quasi 1, Quasi 2. Um, all right, here, so here's what's going on now. Mike, you got Joe Biden uh, ready to go? All right, we're gonna um, we're gonna tell you a little bit about uh, the absurdity of the left as it relates to G U N S, and our view here, Trento Vision, W N N uh, fourteen seventy, where we're broadcasting the United West. Um, look, uh, we we have uh, an amendment called the Second Amendment. It gives citizens uh, a right within limits. You can't own a bazooka. You can't own a tank. That sort of thing. If you're a felon, you can't own a gun. Um, and uh, the the Second Amendment provides for um, personal ownership of weapons. And our view is if you want to have a weapon, you can have a weapon. If you don't, you don't have to have a weapon. <laughs> there's, no there's no compulsion in Islam, <laughs> you know. There's no compulsion in the Second Amendment. If you want to stay away from guns, fine. You know, if you want the cops to not have guns, fine. The cops in... Uh, in uh, England, don't have guns. They have little little toy sticks. All of that. We can we can go back to that, and then uh, have fun calling the cops when uh, all hell breaks loose. 
zombies are after you, and they're chasing him with their little bobby sticks. See how that works. Well, the police really, they get there too late anyway, and they're really just there to document the crime in, in case they ever actually apprehend <laughs> the person who did you harm, and, and therefore there could be a trial. There's, there's so many little, uh, little sayings that go with the whole gun culture. Um, you know, the, the anti-gun people asks a gun person, why would you carry a gun? And the person says, because I because a cop is too heavy. <laughs> uh, why would you carry a gun? Because carrying a cop is too heavy. Or, um, you know, there's there's different uh, sizes of bullets, whatever they are, ones, twos, nines, tens, whatever, nine millimeter, 45 millimeter. 45 is a big gun. So one anti-gun person says to the person, why in the world would you carry a 45? And the gun person said, because they don't make a 46. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but it's so absurd that uh, the left, uh, all the Hollywood people, and this is a beautiful cultural clash that's going on. The left is hanging on to the First Amendment while trying to slice the Second Amendment right now in this cultural new town clash. Anybody know what that means? 888-565-1470. Well, first of all, the left is not hanging on to the First Amendment. They're they're willing to let it go because they're cooperating with the OIC and the State Department and all the nonsense going on at the UN. Um, and, and second of all, the most prominent of the people on the left who are now shouting for gun control are guarded <laughs> by people who carry guns. Oh, God almighty. Okay? I bet Diane Sawyer and all the stars at ABC have drivers who are armed to protect their charges. Um, I think Nancy you're right. Nancy Pelosi has an armed bodyguard. But the cultural question right Joe now. Joe Biden certainly does. Joe Biden. So does there's the President magic word. President Obama. Take a look at this, folks. This is Joe Biden 2008, circa 2008, when uh, Barack Obama was campaigning for president. And uh, the question was, if Barack Obama becomes president, he's taking your guns away. Well, Joe Biden, the guy who now heads up. I he's our. Not only, not only does he have a shotgun. He's got, he's got a Beretta too. Well, the, the Beretta is the shotgun. Not only does he have a shotgun, he has two shotguns, and he knows the name of one of his shotguns, a Beretta. So um, he's uh, he's familiar with guns. It's 2008. He's saying this over Obama's efforts, or he thinks the the future efforts of his president, to nail guns. And uh, Obama was was laying low in the first term. Now, now, Joe Biden, that he doesn't have to get reelected again. Joe Biden just got selected to be the head of the anti-gun campaign in America. If you think that's crazy, like we do, 888-565-1470, let okay. us know. And we do have a caller on the line. But before we get to the caller, I want to I want to read a quote from the uh, the NRA's yes uh, press conference. Um, earlier today that Mark watched. Um, okay, uh, here's a quote. Because for all the noise and anger directed at us, the NRA, over the past week, no one, nobody has addressed the most important pressing and immediate question we face. How do we protect our children right now, starting today, in a way that we know works. The only way to answer that question is to face the truth. Politicians pass laws for gun-free school zones. They issue press releases bragging about them. They post signs advertising them. And in doing so, they tell every insane killer in America that schools are the safest place to inflict maximum mayhem with minimum risks. And that's exactly... What Mark was saying on the, ra yeah, on the radio it, it, after the, uh, the Newtown massacre. And, you know, you have to wake up. Is We're not mm. in Mayberry anymore. The, there's people out. You have to realize the fact that there's people out there that want to kill kindergarten kids. 
and they want to do it. And there are other groups, which we deal with all the time, they want mm -hmm. to do it on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. So unless you want to actually address the real problem, which is the ideology which drives this, then your only other choice is to arm, put guards inside the schools. Because if you're not going to deal with the true problem, then you got to do with the, you got to actually solve the problem on its immediate level is by going in there and, and protecting the school kids. That's well, the only way in, to te do it. in Texas, they arm the school teachers. And they have armed guards. I tried to get the, uh, uh, I tried to get that guy on. That yeah. he, he's a superintendent of a small district in northern Texas. Yeah. And uh, some years back, he uh, put a put a training program together because they're 20 minutes from the local cops. One mm -hmm. of the reasons. Yeah. But another reason was, we got to you know we're in Texas. We take care of ourselves. Yeah. And um, uh, I tried to find him. I couldn't I couldn't find him. We we but we should bring him on as this uh, yeah. debate. Yeah. Uh, and we have Ann on the line. Okay. Okay. Anne, are you there? Hi. Yes, uh, two things. Number one, I choose to carry a 45 as opposed to a 9 with hollow points because that's more stopping <laughs> on and it's less likely to go to the wall and hit somebody that I love. This is Annie Oakley we have thing, here. It, yes, Annie Oakley from This Texas. is Annie <laughs> Get Your Gun. <laughs> <laughs> And he gets your gun from Texas. Tell us how you're doing right. it out in Texas. No, not, 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 uh, correction, not gun. Guns. <laughs> yes, and, and we do. We do take care of our own here. And uh, he's absolutely correct that this person you were referring to the schools. And, and that's what we do in Texas because we do the right thing. And I'd also just like to add that, you know, all of this gun violence is taking place. Really what's happening is it's a jihadist conspiracy, and they're actually infiltrating our water systems and our food systems, and, and they're actually infiltrating the biochemical uh, warfare that causes the person to think that, you know, they should kill people. So really we should just like solve this jihadist, and that'll solve the problem. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for your thoughts today, Anne. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, that was total. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. But let me ask you this, Anne. Somebody is actually believing that. Yeah, yeah. Just so well, that. you know, uh, if you read. I have a left wing liberal listening, and they might actually believe what I'm saying. And if you if, yeah, if you read if you, Inspire, if you watch Doctor Strange Love, or you read Inspire <laughs> magazine, Al Qaeda's magazine. Yeah. Um, they they actually uh, that's they do have a plan for that. Yeah, they they yeah. they used to publish about a quarterly magazine called Inspire, but um, a uh, a Hellfire <laughs> missile hit the Inspire guy in the head a few months back, and he's not quite. Why don't you to get people? Yeah, <laughs> he's not he's not inspiring too many people, but they have they have all kinds of stuff like that where they give jihadis ideas to you know poison the border system or do whatever. But let me ask you this: in in Texas, um, uh, the I, I know a lot of inner schools. We uh, we were talking to somebody the other day. That was Rabbi Schifrin. Yeah, that's right. Inner schools they are they are like. Um, they're like fortresses, yeah, and and rightfully so because they're all gangbangers in there. It's basically yeah. a it's basically a, a pre staging prison for future prisoners. Many of these schools, yeah. But when oh, you yeah. get into the suburban areas, the nice areas of Dallas and all of that, these are the soft targets. Um, do you know of any programs, you know, in the in the nice suburbs of Dallas where uh, there's armed guards in the school and and teachers are being trained to uh, to defend themselves, be a first line of defense? Uh, yes, and, it, you know, you find that in a lot of the schools, actually, um, where they're choosing to turn to, and they have for several years now, uh, where they're choosing to turn to armed security guards um, on campus, which is perfectly fine with me because, quite frankly, I would rather not have a liberal unionized teacher holding a weapon. But, um, you know, so they, are, they are finding some solutions to the situation, and, yes, they do provide... Um, to the teachers that, that, that want it. I don't know that they've mandated, mandated it at any school, but I do know that they offer that type of um, defense, self-defense training and things like that. You just raised um, a great question. Uh, this, this question needs to, be, um, needs to be dealt with because right now, and the NRA is saying, uh, you know, we, we need to have a zone of protection. There can't be gun-free zones with this new world we live in. But, but these are unions. These are all, right. all these teachers are union members. 
And can you imagine what the union would do to uh, to either block or if if uh, how you, I mean can't be forced to carry a gun. It, it would have to be personal preference of somebody, and the union would stop that. It would probably be virtually impossible to get uh, anything passed through the unions where teachers who wanted to carried um, carried weapons. That would be very interesting, that battle. It did take place with uh, the airline pilots, though, and uh, we do have airline pilots now carrying carrying weapons on board airplanes. Um, if you think yeah, and, and I, don't, I don't think that anybody wants to, to see any type of mandate that forces every teacher to carry. I think that it should be more of a personal choice for those teachers who choose to or who feel comfortable right. doing so. Right. But I think we need to further that to ensure, because they are working with children and they are working for the state, that they do have, you know, a sufficient amount of training uh, in several different realms, not just target training, but um, just general self-defense um, training as well. And, you know, if their gun gets knocked out of their hand, then what do they do? I mean, they do need to be prepared for various situations. And again, I mean, I really don't want a liberal unionized person holding a gun. I would, I would really pray that it would, and, and would guess it would be the conservative teachers who would choose to do something like that. Um, hey, and one more so, question. One more question. Um, why does anybody need a uh, an AR-15 that can shoot in a semi-automatic mode? You know, a hundred rounds a minute or some crazy number with 30-round, 40-round, 50-round magazines. Um, the, the argument right now is, who the heck needs a gun like that in America? Well, that's one of the main reasons for the Second Amendment, to protect ourselves against tyranny from the government. What are they armed with? Well, yeah, but, but I, if the government went to come after you, your little AR-15 is not going <laughs> to stop them. Yeah, and that's the whole point. Who says point. I only have one? Well, it doesn't matter how many you have. They get tanks and... And that, yeah, look at what and, and stuff right, like that. But, yeah, mean, if the government's coming the after is, you, you should go to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, then you could be fully armed. You know? I mean, no, you'd be untouched by the government. <laughs> <laughs> they, can't, they, can't, they can't get anything done in Mexico. Well, not, uh, if you go, not if you go in as Al Qaeda or a jihadist supporter, then you, you, then you got a free ride. Well, actually, that's where they're coming from coming through South right. America, Central America, up through Mexico, right into Texas, right into your town. Well, yeah, there is an argument. Right, 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 Dan. right through those tunnels. All right, right we uh, we got to let you go. We're going to get Volanda on, and then we're going to um, say hello to IQ, take a break, then bring IQ back. Let's bring Volanda. Okay, on. Thanks, Volanda. Anne. Good afternoon. Good and, afternoon. Maybe. And Merry Christmas if we don't get a chance to talk to you Monday or Tuesday. Well, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas uh, to you guys and uh, whoever celebrates um, uh, Hanukkah or what have you. But listen, I was I was listening at uh, the program earlier, and by the way, the um, person that you had on was pretty much right on the money. I would love to hear uh, what he thinks Barack Obama is, because those people who are who are Christians, people that I know, people that in the circles I'm in, I don't know too many Christians, with the, maybe with the exception of some, that go along number one with with gay marriage. And number two, one of his colleagues, one of Barack Obama's colleagues, when he was at the University of Chicago, a professor, uh, heard him say, and when he did, had the discussion uh, about guns, now this could be a part of many of his evolutions because he evolved on the gay marriage thing as well. He said that he didn't, th he said Barack told him that he didn't think anyone should have a handgun or a gun at the period. Right. So it, it's 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 kind of bizarre now that mm -hmm. Joe Biden comes out talking about his Beretta and whatever else he has, but uh, it's it's uh, Barack Obama's on the record for not liking guns at all. Right. I so remember I'm, that I'm, from two thousand eight. Yeah. That, that, yeah. The, that Biden comment was from two thousand eight. Yeah. It wasn't current. Yeah. Biden. Yeah. It's so I'm I'm so I'm so I'm you know I'm I'm a tad bit you know con, you know confused about that, but. Uh, this, the person that you had on, and I would, and I would be interested if one of you guys, if you know, if, if, if I'm not on or what have you. Okay. Um, I would love to ask him who he thinks Barack really is, because a lot of the positions that he has taken, the way he shuns the Christian, shuns the Christian community. Period. Uh, I question his Christianity myself. Now, I should, maybe I should not, because it tells us not to judge. But I, I, I question those Christian uh, credentials anyway, and I think. 
a number of you were listening at the service that he did recently uh, for those <laughs> for those children in Connecticut, and uh, the way he stumbles over certain, uh, like you said, certain uh, sentences, certain passages of the Bible. You wonder about that, right? So uh, it would be inter- I would be interested to know what your guest thinks about. Uh, about who he really is, because a lot of the positions that Barack, Barack has taken, quite quite frankly, are not Christ, Christian posi- uh, positions. But I know most of the liberation theology um, that he was particular, that he was under, mm-hmm. if you listen at a lot of the sermons, you don't hear a lot of real, you know, bedrock Christianity coming out from no, there. You, you hear don't. a lot of political statements no. being made. No. You, don't, you don't hear the... Uh, the bed, bedrock Christian principles or biblical references that you normally hear in many Christian ser- sermons. So I'd be interested to hear what he, what his perspective on Barack, Barack Obama is, because he comes from, I think, a, a, a place where, you know, a, a lot of us don't understand, you know, uh, you know, a lot of us haven't read the Koran, a lot of us haven't studied the Koran, but we've all been under the impression that the that the Quran that uh, the Quran and the Bible are on par and they're, and they're not they really aren't and uh, when he referenced that that uh, passage in the Quran in which uh, which says that the God Allah never took a son that was pinpointing it right there because uh, that that is completely diametrically opposed to Christianity and diametrically opposed to you know. I would say even probably Judaism. But, okay, Valanda, um, um, this this is a very good question, and and I think we were leaving off with a question like that um, mm-hmm. with our with our friend IQ um, at the end of the first hour of our show, and we're going to be bringing him on in the third hour just of few, our just show, a few just we're in take a few a short minutes. Break, yeah. Um, yeah. Try to listen if you can. Um, if you're okay. not able to uh, get through on the phone, then we'll go ahead and. Uh, We'll we'll, we'll we'll ask, ask the question, the question yeah, we'll for ask the you. All right. And by the way, and by the way, Tom and Mark, just to let you know, that uh, little thing with Sharia, you guys are brilliant on that. Who wrote the word? Oh. <laughs> He's queuing it up for us. Yeah, we're, we're going to do one right now. Absolutely. We're going to do, do one, one right, right now. now. You agree yeah. on that. All right, here we go. Uh, listening, we only got Belanda. about a minute. Okay. Uh, he's, he's okay. Go. All right, here we go. Go ahead. Scott, read while it's playing. I can't hit. can't read while it's playing. Read on top of it. <laughs> what is it? My Sharika, never it? gonna stop her. Give it up. Killing infidels always got a plan. Underhand, give a lot of yell. My, 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 I, I, whoa. My, 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 the measure of good and bad, according to this school of thought, is the sacred law, not reason. The good is not what reason considers good, nor bad what reason considers bad. Oh, that's a good one. In okay. other words, gonna, do not think. Let's leave with that thought. Follow we're going to leave with that, and then we're going to open with that and go to IQ and yeah. uh, have him pick up from that. So you're with Tom Trento, TrentoVision.tv, WNN 1470, 55 minutes past 4 o'clock. We'll be right back. It's almost happy hour. Ah. 